if you were around in early 2020, you may remember this very trashy reality show that came out right before the pandemic. It was a time of peace and laughter, watching crazy, dumb people ruin their lives for television. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. I generally cover pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. Today I'm talking a dumb Netflix show, one of my favorite genres, <laughs> and that show is Love is Blind. Love is Blind is a Netflix reality dating show that really changed the game for dating shows with its extreme stakes and format. Love is Blind was one of those shows that was trolled a lot by people on social media, on Twitter, on Reddit, the way The Bachelor traditionally is. But despite how trashy this show was, it really, really pushed boundaries in the dating reality show genre. The first season aired in early 2020, like I mentioned, around Valentine's Day. They would put a guy and a girl, always a guy and a girl because it's hetero. <laughs> they would put a guy and a girl separated by a wall into two pods and they would talk through the wall, have like dates through the wall. It was a little foreshadowing of quarantine now that we can think about it pre-pandemic. The only way the contestants could move on to the next stage of the competition was if they got engaged in the pod without ever seeing each other. The pod section of the show only encompasses like the first couple of episodes and then you move on to following all of the couples that got engaged. Yes, there were quite a few couples that got engaged. It follows them all the way up to their wedding day and it is at the altar where they either have to say I do or I do don't. <laughs> and today I'm going to be talking about sort of the continuation of their story, so spoilers ahead for the ending of the first season of Love is Blind. So Netflix has actually dropped three new episodes of Love is Blind that are still part of season one, but two years later from the final episode. And it's sort of a three episode reunion special almost, but not like a housewife sit around and talk reunion. They did do one of those earlier earlier on. It was more like they were following their lives or documentary or Kardashian style and showing where they're at in their love lives and mostly making a bunch of contrived drama for the show but we'll get to that later. And this special was called Love is Blind After the Altar. The big event in the reunion special is that they're all going to get together for the two-year anniversary of the two couples that did get married at the end of Love is Blind. Upon the success of the season one of Love is Blind, Netflix ordered a season two and a season three. As I'm recording this video, Netflix has not announced a release date, but I imagine that sort of imminent now that they're sort of garnering buzz again with this reunion special. I love to hate this show, but I am still excited for upcoming seasons. People have to get engaged under extreme circumstances and we're following them to the wedding, to the marriage. I just can't believe that they actually had success stories on it. That really legitimized the format despite how insane it sounds. So I feel like that's why Love is Blind was such a huge phenomenon and as much as I'm going to hate on it, I'm excited to see season two. I hope they drop the release date soon. But anyway, I just wanted to go through my thoughts on After the Altar, these three episodes, all of the plot lines and drama that went on. There's definitely a lot of messiness and theatrics. I took notes while watching the three new episodes and um, I just want to go in chronological order to just give my reactions as I went along this special. So I may not provide like a total amount of context. I'm sort of assuming either you've watched the After the Altar new episodes or I'm going to assume that you're never going to watch it and just want me to tell you the juicy parts. At the beginning of the first episode, we just start seeing what they've been doing ever since the last episode we saw them. We see Janina, who was one of the most um, dramatic characters on this show. And even from the very first scene, it felt so staged because Janina is talking to her mom on FaceTime and the mom through FaceTime 
time. You can very much tell she's like a horrible actress and like is just saying lines. And on top of it, Janina is talking. Here, let me get let me get a prop phone for this. This is an original iPhone 3, in case you're curious. Um, okay, so <gasps> whoa. This is a side note, but the iPhone 3 didn't have like a front camera. That's so weird to see. It's so little, like. Okay, anyway, so Janina is like walking around, walking her dog on FaceTime with her mom, and she's just like to the camera, like, um, full on modeling while on FaceTime, like. That was literally the first scene and very telling of how the rest of the special was gonna feel. It just felt very staged. So we also catch up with Cameron and Lauren who are sort of like the perfect couple that came out of this show. They really seem to have zero flaws that they show which is stupid because that's not a thing but <laughs> they're as perfect as ever. It was interesting to see Cameron seasoning his food very thoroughly. Maybe that was some sort of influence. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, for learning. Right off the bat, when we're catching up with everyone, um, they talk about what they've been doing. Janina has been just on and off with Damien, as we, the fans, sort of knew or whatever or suspected. Cameron and Lauren are happy, whatever. The weirdest part is they don't acknowledge COVID at all. Like, at all as like something they've gone through <laughs> like everyone in the world has until episode three and i'll get to my thoughts on that conversation but they literally never mentioned like ever since the last episode we had a global pandemic and that was rough and we did this literally no mention no mention of quarantine it's almost like a lot of the fictional shows i've been watching that have made the decision not to include COVID um, in their universe. iCarly, for example, it's a COVID-free world. Like, they don't talk about COVID. They just assume COVID didn't happen in their world, which I think is good. I think people crave that escapism. The weird part is Love is Blind is a fucking reality show. It's not a fictional show. They did go through a global pandemic. And this just it added even more to me feeling like this was all fiction, like it was all fake and staged because the way we don't see them mention the pandemic, the quarantine, wearing a mask, they go to restaurants and stuff throughout the whole few episodes. They go to restaurants, they go to a party, which I'll get to that later. To me, it's like, okay, this whole show is just fantasy. Like, it's literally not real. COVID doesn't exist in this universe either. I learned after looking into it and researching it, this was filmed in November of 2020. But that means, like, they were throwing these huge parties and um, going out to all these restaurants and stuff during the height of the pandemic. Like, the pandemic was very much still happening in the United States. You don't even have the excuse of like, oh, mask mandates are lifted and stuff. It's literally like, you're just out there super spreading. How is this legal? <laughs> I'm sure the production behind the cameras had like gear on, but like, they didn't want to like break the fantasy of the show to like mention COVID. And I just find it very creepy and odd and sort of shady safety wise, honestly. So at the beginning of episode one, we spend most of our time with Lauren and Cameron. They're giving like the whole exposition script saying what everyone on the cast of Love is a Blind is up to, to like their dads at the table. And the dads are clearly not interested. They were clearly fed questions to be like, how are Jessica and Mark doing? How are so-and-so doing? And Lauren and Cameron are like, Janina is living here and she and Damien are on and off. So they're giving like the whole sort of script. And then at the end they say, oh, we thought it would be fun to have a dual anniversary party with Amber and Barnett and invite everyone from Love is Blind <laughs> uh, for a reunion. They have no mention of like, we're filming it for this show or these cameras. They just act like it was their idea of a fun anniversary party. It's just like, we know the producers are putting on this party when they have nothing in common with the Barnetts, even by their names. <laughs> the Hamiltons are bougie as hell and sophisticated, and the Barnetts are 
tacky and trashy i'm sorry so a big talk around the special especially towards the married couples was about having kids and lauren basically sounds like she wants to but doesn't actually want to she's like i should i guess but also like i don't want to have saggy boobs and all that so at least cameron is like very understanding and it's like it's her it's up to her when she wants to and whatever he's very good at being like the perfect boyfriend it's almost very robotic like he must have flaws and he's just like this like perfect guy like that's just not believable <laughs> um but anyway in episode one we start seeing diamond diamond was the first engagement to break up she had this big blowout with carlton the guy who she was engaged with from the pods and Basically, she was displaying a lot of bi-phobia because he said he was bi and she got really mad at him about it. But also, Carlton acted really, really toxic and rude and he's really problematic as well. He's like very misogynist. Diamond was a big part of this special. She was also kind of still looking for love. We saw her pursue this random guy from a bar and bring him to the party and he left and she was sad. So Diamond's story was like interesting she wins best supporting actress of uh, the week for this appearance um she was very in the action but i felt bad because her love life seems kind of like a mess and we also start seeing people that were only on the first couple episodes of love is blind because they didn't make it past the pods they didn't get engaged at the pod section so they were just cut off from the show i like that at least in this reunion we saw these people that we didn't get to see much of so finally we catch up with the other couple Bar the barnett's and they're literally still as childish as ever i think they serve as a good contrast to lauren and cameron the hamiltons they're like two country toddlers that got together i don't know they're just very immature i worry they're trump supporters but i guess that's a later conversation and when we we catch up with the Barnett's we realize that Amber is also still very hateful of Jessica she hates Jessica she literally calls her Voldemort <laughs> I feel like in this special we saw a lot more of Lauren like a shady side and she was like less subdued because she's a very classy lady and she keeps like her mouth shut uh, about like judging other people at least in the first chunk of episodes but in after the altar she's not holding back her opinions of her fellow castmates she definitely made fun of jessica's voice we briefly see carlton in after the altar and he behaves the exact same way as two years ago he has a talk with lauren and he like blows up at her he's like really trying to advocate against biphobia but ends up canceling it out with problematic behavior <laughs> like he got so heated about diamonds still about how she reacted and he said really rude and messy things he says like what does she care all women have same-sex encounters anyway like when they drink or something and said i didn't ask diamond how many guys she slept with or how many abortions she had it's like what are you talking about man he just went off attacked lauren for dating a white guy literally said fuck you to lauren and stormed away that was the last we saw of him i don't think we need to give him more chances he just needs to figure his own shit out first Ugh. there was a scene in episode one that was like all the white boys working out together it felt very bro and like ugh. they're all very like muscly so they were all like sort of it was this weird peacocking thing it felt like damien was asking the two married guys what they thought about children we learned sort of where barnett stands on it he said and i quote not using condoms is the best part of marriage <laughs> He's just so immature, like I hate him. He wants kids, but he doesn't want to have them in an apartment complex, which we learned that him and Amber live in an apartment with her roommate. Um, and he sold his house that we had seen originally. Amber really came off like the villain of After the Altar, while Jessica got a big redemption arc. Amber came off as a villain for a lot of reasons. And I agree, like I don't like her very much. I've seen on the subreddit, the fans really, really are hating amber right now but the show also really did her dirty with the editing so i'll get to my problems with amber but the producers of love is blind really did a shady thing here because barnett said that he sold his house that we had seen in earlier episodes to pay off loans and debt 
And then the show cut to when Amber told him that she had $20,000 in student loan debt and she never even graduated with that degree. So we saw Barnett say, I sold my house to pay for loans and debt. And then the show cut to the flashback of her saying she had $20,000 in student loan debt. And we never got clarification if Barnett sold the house to pay those student loan debts, but it is implied by how the show was edited. Well, Amber's getting a lot of hate for this right now. And she tweeted or Instagram that, that she paid off her own student loans and that Barnett used that money for his own debt and student loans that he did have and the show omitted. They were really trying to be shady uh, to paint this narrative that allegedly is not true according to Amber. At first I was like, shit, I believed it. I was like, Barnett sold his house to pay off Amber's student loan debts. Like what a hoe. But no, apparently she works and he works and they both have their own debts and are paying them off themselves. <laughs> so later in episode one, we meet another girl that didn't make it past the pods named LC. And LC, Diamond, Gia, and Jessica all go to like lunch or wine or whatever. They go to lunch. They sort of have a really good cheese mess session and gossip about everyone on the cast and what they've been up to. So this was the first time we saw Jessica in this special and Jessica, <laughs> She was just as annoying as ever, voice-wise. <laughs> she was kind of infamous in Love is Blind for being very obnoxious. She let her dog drink out of her wine glass. She was just very, very cringy, honestly. Elsie dated Mark, who Mark was the guy that Jessica was engaged with on the show and Jessica said no to. But Elsie sort of talked about how she had a really bad experience dating him because she found out he was seeing another girl and she thought they were actually exclusive at that time and he had told her he wasn't seeing other people and then he was seeing this other girl and now that girl is pregnant. We also learn from Jessica that she believes he cheated on her while they were engaged and filming the show. This was an important piece of information because Jessica was the villain of the original season. She was hated for how she treated Mark and Mark came off as a very good guy that was very in love with her, very earnest and obsessed with Jessica and Jessica just looked like she was inconsiderate of his feelings. It was very interesting to learn how Mark's nice guy act was fake and really putting on a performance for the cameras. This was sort of the beginning and the peak of Jessica's redemption arc and after the altar she really got redeemed. After the special she comes off as very mature, very much she moved on. She claims to have like some perfect boyfriend back in LA. We did not see him so I'm like is he real? She's over Barnett and just wants to be on good terms with Barnett and Amber. Definitely Jessica got the best edit on this special. Maybe it was to make up for how horribly uh, she came off in the first parts. Amber was like the main villain of all, After the Altar in general, but Mark was like the big super villain that never showed up, but he was like in the in the background. Finally, in episode one, we had the introduction of the most stupid and contrived part of this After the Altar special. Damien supposedly dating a girl from a different Netflix reality show that's even more trashy called Too Hot to Handle, named Francesca. She's like exactly the definition of like an Instagram model look. So Damien and Francesca both claim that they're just friends, but in this this scene, we see them get lunch and they're very, very flirty with each other. They got paparazzi leaving a club together and holding hands. People freaked out because he was supposedly dating Janina at the time. This whole scene was literally so fake. Like, Damien rode in in this fancy car. I don't know what kind of car it was, but it was clearly like product placement integrated into the, into the show. Because he was just like, I just love my Ford F1 500 2000. It makes me feel so hot and sexy and he just said it in such a stupid way. It was literally a commercial. This was full product placement and I promise you. The tell was that he said the name of whatever car it was like exactly like the technical 
official name. He drives this fancy product placement car into this bar where he meets up with Francesca. And Francesca's clearly very much cloud chasing. Not individually, like she was clearly placed here by Netflix. I feel like Netflix has just been using the too hot to handle cast as like, just when they need a hot person for another show, they just call up <laughs> that cast and it's just like a roster of hot people you can call. We saw Chloe participate in the circle season too and actually do pretty well on it. So it's clear Francesca is just hired to be there <laughs> uh, to cause drama and stir the pot. She is flirting with Damien, saying all her lines. It's unclear if they have a thing or if he loves Janina. So a lot of the rest of the time, focuses on this plot line of Damien and Francesca and Janina struggling to believe they're just friends or not. It's just funny because Damien also, Damien is like the cringiest guy or one of the cringiest guys on this show. He is so vain and boring at the same time. This man is 29 years old and it's very difficult for me to believe it. He looks 40. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but he does. And he's talking to Francesca about like getting Botox and fillers and how he's been getting this work done, how he's getting Botox on his armpits. It's funny how he says like, oh, I'm a fan of natural beauty when he's talking to Francesca who was like 80% plastic. <laughs> like, and Francesca has the gall to say like, oh, well, Botox on your armpits is bad. <laughs> it keeps all the toxins in. And it's like, yeah, she's probably right. But also like, she's had so many procedures that's like, Girl, who, who are you to talk? And in the end, Damien invites Francesca to this big anniversary party conveniently and is very like, oh yeah, we're just going as friends, but we'll see where the night goes. So it's very slimy, very like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Man, so in episode two, we also got this very cringy conversation with Amber and her mother-in-law, Barnett's mom. Amber is talking to the mom about having kids. Amber says she was diagnosed with epilepsy and that she's just worried about her health as she gets older and not being able to have kids sort of comfortably, that she's sort of wanting to take advantage of her body now. And Barnett wants to wait more. And the mom is like, well, you just gotta do what he wants to do because the man is the breadwinner. The man is the head of household. That's the way it is in the Bible. <laughs> My face, it was like Lisa Simpson. It was gross. I was shocked that this was aired and Amber's just like, honestly, I really feel for basic people that are still trying to make kids happen in this economy. Like, I'm sorry to y'all. That sucks that you feel just pressured just because like who cares nothing matters sorry i'm pushing my anti-natalist agenda but i just feel bad like everyone just sounds like they don't want kids but they're just like but i should have them soon because i'm just getting old like do you even want kids like this is a horrible attitude to bring a life into the world like i don't think people realize like the weight of bringing someone to life in this world. Like, it's a person. You're making a person with a consciousness. Ugh. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was my soapbox. So I thought it was funny when Jessica was getting ready for the party. She got this gift for Amber and Barnett and wants to give it to them. And she's just like, oh yeah, both of them blocked me on Instagram. But I really don't know how they feel about me at this point. You don't know how they feel about you? They have blocked you? on Instagram and you don't know. So finally we get to the party. Let me talk about the party. This party was the most like, excuse me, what the fuck? This was filmed during COVID in November of 2020 before vaccines existed. It's a large indoor party with not a mask in sight. We had the main cast that we're following. We had all the cast from the pods. We didn't get the host, Dick Lachey or Vanessa Lachey. They're probably not up for going to a super spreader event. We saw Rory, the therapist, who was like an early favorite. I was Googling stuff about season two. There was no information out there. So I ran into some behind the scenes tea from season one and apparently Rory and some other guy and some girl named Danielle and some other girl. There were two more engaged couples in the pods and the producers were literally overwhelmed by the amount of engagements they got after the pods. They were preparing for one or two and they ended up getting like seven or eight total engagements out of the pods and they couldn't afford to 
follow everybody. So they cut two engaged couples from the post pod section of the show. I think that sucks for those people. They could have been famous. They could have been rich from brand deals on Instagram and they were just both couples actually broke up soon after. Lauren was a superstar at the anniversary party. She looked amazing. Like she had on fashion and she was there calling people bullshit she was like yeah damien and janina are toxic damien knows what he's doing bring francesca here she was comforting diamond with her when her guy left her she was all around an mvp of the night and she was the one being the most celebrated the whole arrival of francesca was very dramatized for the show clearly staged she comes in in literally a bra and like casual pants and she looks so out of place in her dress obviously everyone freaked out janina freaked out everyone was like how dare he bring <laughs> francesca here someone was like is she on the wrong netflix show jessica was like i don't know her mariah style <laughs> we finally get the big confrontation of her and janina and damien and it's super awkward when damien introduces francesca janina is just like i was trying to get my mom invited here but it's good to see you made it mm -hmm. yeah interesting <laughs> uh, but honestly i was kind of living for the drama despite it being super fake <laughs> so that was kind of a big fight when damien walks away janina tells francesca like stay away from my man starts being all controlling and toxic and i don't know what to believe with them honestly damien is a scumbag and these two women are way too good for him janina is also controlling and toxic like she is not this angel a lot of fans on reddit honestly see her as this big perfect angel and i'm just like Ew, no, she's controlling and problematic too. Damien's bigger trash, but that doesn't make it much better. And then the other big fight comes from the girls and Amber. Diamond and LC have a big fight about Mark because Amber defends Mark and is friends with Mark. And LC feel very, like, betrayed and, like, he's a total fuckboy. Amber through this whole special and i think why she's the actual villain she was edited poorly about the student loan stuff and stuff but i do think she is a full-on pick me girl she is the type of girl that will side with a man over women that won't be friends with women so she has this big fight with lc and diamond where she says mark didn't do anything wrong. You assumed you were exclusive, but you weren't. She says I'm married a bunch of times for some reason in the fight. And this is the first time we hear about COVID because it's relevant to the plot, but Elsie says she got COVID from Mark and she had told them that she has asthma. She was really worried about getting COVID and that they should be exclusive if they want to keep hanging out. Then she got COVID and found out that he was hanging out with a lot of other people and cheating on her, whatever. So Amber completely invalidates all this. She's like, it's irrelevant that it was a pandemic. We were all taking that risk and hanging out with each other. That made it clear to me that she is one of those people that really did not take the pandemic seriously at all. She was probably hanging with friends and she wasn't ashamed to admit it. Amber again has had to clear up that they actually made up at the end of the night and the, it was corroborated by the girls that were in the fight against her. We didn't see in the special that they made up um and she had a photo of them like hugging uh, after all of this and that they were fine i don't think that changes the fact that amber is a super spreader and i don't respect her for that <laughs> we have this whole thing where jessica tries to give amber and barnett a gift and it's just so silly because it's like no one else is giving them gifts no one's giving lauren and cameron a gift so it's just like it's clearly like a plot point to cause tension with the Jessica and Barnett and Amber situation. The way Barnett just runs away from Jessica when she approaches him was so childish and like ridiculous. Like he could have just accepted it and put it aside, thrown it away later. And he ran away, hid behind Amber and was like, Jessica's trying to give me a gift. And Amber was just like, 
oh fuck that bitch don't we're not accepting anything from her we're not talking to her rory the therapist guy gives a speech they have all these sentimental sappy moments cameron gives a speech and cries and lauren's like i'm glad he's in touch with his emotions even though she like doesn't react much to his emotions ever she's just like oh thanks she's a badass i love her barnett gives a speech and shows a video compilation of him kissing amber in the morning when he leaves her work it was a cute idea sure but like looks wise it just looked weird and awkward because it was all like close up while she was sleeping damien says oh he learned from all these couples how to keep fighting and moving forward and all this but then he goes yells at gia and they break up francesca leaves earlier in the party because she's uncomfortable francesca was just a paid actor like full stop and yeah and they lived happily the same after <laughs> after the altar overall i thought this special was extremely overproduced i don't know if it's the pandemic that has jaded me but it definitely felt even more produced than the main part of the season they didn't acknowledge or respect covid <laughs> protocols at all they're all clearly wanting to get famous i'm excited and terrified to see how season two is gonna play out just because like this show has such high stakes and is so stupid and ridiculous i'll be here making a video about it um let me know your thoughts on love is blind or after the altar uh what did you think of this reunion do you believe it do you think it's fake do you think some of it's real um let me know in the comments below please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed i put out new videos twice a week about pop culture internet trends and other miscellaneous things thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye